my first round stage, so please excuse me if I get confused. Yeah, I'm a father, first and foremost, and then an entrepreneur. As was told in the intro, I was part of the founding team at Tidal, exited to JC, and now building Unicast. But this is one of the few times on the stage where I'm not pitching the company, and that feels good. We are about 40 people strong uh, team by now in New York and Oslo. And we recently pushed our uh, share of women in the tech company Unicas from 17% to 36% in six months. And I've been, I've been invited here today to talk about how we did that because I'm kind of tired of everything, everyone talking about gender diversity as important, but very few actually sharing how to do something about it. So I'm going to share how we did that. So first, I'm going to talk about how can man, and sadly man is often in control of a tech startup, get women into tech, but also at the end, how can women get women into tech? It's all interconnected. So we first started, as everyone does, realizing that we had a diversity deficit. That's the start. It's a problem. Uh, it's a problem because of a fairness principle, but most because it's bad business. Studies have shown that more diverse teams actually perform better on the bottom line. Second, then follows the internal discussions on why this is, and how to fix it, right? Everyone has been through that stage, hopefully. Third, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing happens. No rush of women are applying to your tech jobs. Nothing happens. And my thesis is that most companies stop here. And they sit in their office and they wonder, why does no one want to work here? And they give up. There's a couple of more steps, as you can see here. We went to step number four. New internal discussions. Why did we fail and how to fix it and not only talk about it? We had to reconvene and discuss this. Fifth, we actually created a dedicated team to work on these topics. We weren't expecting this anymore to happen by itself. We had to uh, treat this as any business mission set down a dedicated team to think of this and only this. And then we admitted to the world that we had failed. And whenever you see that logo there, you can find our blog post on unicast.com describing in more detail. We had to say to the world that we had failed, also to commit ourselves to the solution. And then we had to change our company culture and also how we communicated. We actually went through all our texts on all our external sites and changed how we talk about ourselves and how we talk about future candidates. As an example, Unicast, Unicastle, and we were calling ourselves the Knights of the Unicastle. A fun, startup y kind of thing. What we later discovered was that a lot of women felt that to be unnecessary masculine. We hadn't thought of that, but in the process, we learned it. We removed the knights. So we relaunched our values with being your own CEO as the core value, meaning creating a culture where every single individual in the company could shape the company as they saw fit themselves. From everything to when you come in the morning to when you go in the afternoon, when you take your vacations, and how you prioritize your tasks. We wanted to open up so the company was more approachable for a more diverse set of human beings. Then we changed and opened up our hiring processes to avoid biases. What we had learned was that when we had a hiring situation and we have hired 20, 30 people the last 12 months, we tended to end up hiring ourselves because the process wasn't good enough. It wasn't structured enough. So when push comes to shove, I can more easily understand me than you. So I ended up hiring me 20, 30 times over. 
So we had to change our entire hiring process and also open up that process to the world so that future candidates could see how we're hiring, what we're looking for. Then we launched our diversity dashboard, again, showing the world how we're doing, where we are doing well, and where we're doing not so well, but daring to be transparent. And then we did something very important. We agree that it is OK to take longer to hire if you're looking for something in particular. Many come to me and say, yeah, that's all well and good, but I have to hire the best candidates. I have to. Saying that for me is as futile as saying as there's one person out there that you can have a, a, a more intimate relationship with. If that was true, you could never have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. So that's true in a hiring situation as well. There's always 10, 20 candidates that are just f a, a fit for the role. But you have to give yourself the time to actually find that person. And then comes the most important part that I think a lot of companies fail to do. You have to work hard. You have to work hard on this. And you have to learn and you have to iterate. It will not be perfect the first time. You have to do it again and again and again. And then what do you have to do? You have to work harder. This is not easy. As anything you want to accomplish with a company, you have to actually put the resources needed behind it, and you have to be willing to change the company accordingly to achieve your goals. That holds true for gender diversity as well. So you have to, you have to want it, you have to work hard, and you have to work harder. That's our secret recipe. It's not like some magic bullet or a a secret formula. You just have to work really hard at it. And this is just the start of our journey. We have an internal ambition and goal to get this up to 50%. We want to show other tech companies that if you want this enough, and if you work hard enough, you can actually bring the gender balance up to where it should be, matching the world around us, 50-50. But there is another element that we can never escape, and that is time. There is 24 hours in a day. And that time restraint goes for all of us, man or woman, rich or poor. And I had an experience, a personal experience, that led me to understand that this is a multifaceted topic. It's not only what goes on in the workplace. It's bigger than that. So a couple of months ago, I was on a train ride with my daughter. Just me and her. And we went into the family compartment, and we saw this sign. This is the sign for family on Norwegian trains. It's fair to say that I didn't really feel at home. So I went together with a designer, and we changed the logo to something more fitting for me as a father. And we sent it to NSB, which is the train company. No reaction, but that's not the point of the story. What I saw and got to kind of internalize that day is that fixing something in the workplace is only half the story. You have to also think about how you fix this as, at home. Because I was clearly not seen as a parent in, 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 uh, from that, uh, that um, certain interaction. So if we don't think about the family life at the same time, I think it will be harder for us to reach the 50%. And the family perspective is something that we all have to think about all the time. Because this is a fact in Norway. Less men take paternity leave. It's a downward trend. Men take less paternity leave. It's a downward trend. More women get custody of the breakups. And more women take chores at home. So while I think that the tech companies need to want it, they need to work hard and work harder, I think we need to uh, expect the same from the family. They need to want it, they need to work hard, and they need to work harder.
This is a picture you get if you search for work-life balance on certain picture services. And this is a sad, sad picture. So why is this important? Why do we need to focus on both what goes on in the companies and what goes on in the families? It's very visible in this picture. We need to fix this for this poor fellow that is not seeing his kid. He's in the computer, he's building his tech startup, he's not seeing the family. We need to fix this for him. We need to fix this for her. She's only seeing the family. She's not seeing the tech startup that's being built a computer away. She needs to look up from that family and allow that man to come into it. But most of all, most of all, we need to fix this for this poor little fellow. Because he's growing up, seeing how his parents are both building tech companies and families, and he or her will copy them. So we all have to work harder on the companies we're building and the families that we're forming. Thank you.